So my channel's rapidly growing. Yeah, it's only got 3,000 followers, but that's still like, we passed 3,000 last week, and that was awesome. And um, somehow I got featured on a video or something, and it's growing. So if you're just tuning into this channel, you're a new viewer, I'm a solar contractor, solar installer. I got four kids and one on the way. I'm a southern boy. I'm from the state of Georgia, North Georgia. This is my solar array. It's almost 20 kW. I'm also fixing up and solarizing this 1890s farmhouse. And this video you're tuning into is talking about my hot water setup for a big family. All right, guys. So this is my buffer tank. This is like a 120 gallon stainless steel solar electric water heater. Boom. So this is my solar electric water heater. Let you look at that for a second. And then I'm going to go over the specs. All right, so check it out, guys. This is that AET solar thermal catalog. And um, solar thermal, like I said, it's pretty dead now. Not, not a lot of people doing it anymore. There's a good cross-section of an old solar thermal collector. This company still makes all this stuff. I install a ton of it in the beginning of my career. I was a solar hot water man. You talk about some heat, folks. There's nothing hotter than solar hot water. But now, you know, it's mostly PV, which is the photovoltaic solar electric. But they had lots of good stuff. Now, this is the tank that I'm using. It's got a 4,500 watt element. It um, has a submerged single wall heat exchanger. So I was wrong there. That's a submerged heat exchanger inside of there. And um, it's a cool, beefy tank. And I got a really good deal on it because it was free. And I'm stoked to have it. Um, there's that, that's where the 4,500 watt element is. There's the T temperature and pressure relief valve. There was the, uh, the in and the out, hot in, hot out. And then that right there, like I said, is the, uh, ports to the heat exchanger. So I'll see if I can find you real quick what it looks like in the middle of one. That's kind of what a internal submerged heat exchanger looks like. And that, that's what, that's what's in there. Um, but it's bigger. And then this is a really good manual. It shows you a lot of stuff, shows you some system diagrams. And then there's right there, Let's see if I can show you this. It's a pretty low definition. There you can see the uh, heat exchanger. And they don't really give you the spec on how much pipe is inside of there, or how many feet. And then there's where the backup element is. So I'm going to be using mine. I don't even know how I'm going to use it yet, but it's going to be a buffer tank at first. And then I may try to heat. I really want to heat water with mulch. So that's the end of this video, this part. All right, so this water heater is a solar electric water heater. It's stainless steel. It was given to me by a good friend of mine, Jerry Kilgore, Suncatcher of Atlanta. He's one of the solarist, solar men of them all. And he's a solar hot water guy. Solar hot water is kind of dead right now, but if you want to hear some of my old solar tunes, I might sing them for you. There ain't nothing hotter than the solar hot water. Uh, let me get that again. I get that in a second. So I'm stepping back just to show you the tank. Talk, talk to you a little bit about it before it goes in the crawl space because it's going to be dark in there. But it's got a wrap around stainless steel heat exchanger. I may cut the spec sheet and show you that. But it's a coil wraps around. So if I ever want to do some kind of a solar hot water, I got that. That is the port for flushing the thing out. These are temperature sensor ports. There's a couple of them on here. This is a 4,500 watt element. And then the uh, thermostat was removed, but I'm putting the thermostat back in. You can see where the wire goes in. So I'm gonna use this tank as a buffer tank or a preheater for my, uh, my heat pump water heater. So the cold water goes in right there, and then the hot comes out right there. So the Solark has the smart load feature, so I can dump uh, electric resistance heat into that uh, element and then it also has the ability for the two heat the heat exchanger I showed you so hopefully I'm gonna get a solar hot water heating system going on my upper roof of my farmhouse look at the farmhouse guys it's coming along isn't it so I'm gonna be doing more videos on how I solarize this farmhouse take this 1890s um, energy hog you'll never heat this house kind of house and turn it into a efficient and a solar house. There's my solar array up there. We're just about moved in. 
Okay, in case you guys were wondering how I got her in there, she's just sliding down in the crawl space like a big fat baby. She's sliding right down in there. Now I got her, got her in. Woo, man. So I just wrestled that water heater in with these ramps into this. There's my little ramp set up there. Take you in my crawl space and show you just what I got going on in here. We, uh, so we didn't want to, you can see we had, that was about the original level right there. We dug her out because I just had to have enough room to stand up in my crawl space. I mean, there just wasn't enough room. So I dug it out. There was a couple of spots where the, it seemed like the footer was a little bit wimpy. This house was moved here in the 80s. So I dug all the way under the footer and built a, uh, the name, name for it, but it slips me. Did the same thing right there. And then I poured myself a little slab and I got my water system here, my well pump. Uh, there's my, there's where my well comes in. I got my pressure tank. There's uh, another pressure tank and then this is the hot water heater. And then my heat pump water heater. This is really the big question is, is, is do I, do I go for it and put the heat pump water heater in the laundry room where I'm probably gonna have a chest freeze or a, a freezer, uh, a washer and a dryer, uh, it's like the central part of the house. Do I go for it and put a heat pump water heater in there? For you, you guys that don't know, heat pump water heater pulls heat out of the air, puts it back into the water, so it would be perfect to go with an electric dryer and a washing machine and all those motors and everything that's going to be in there. Or do I play it safe and put her right down there on the slab where I put a spot for the heat pump water heater? Still be nice to have her dehumidify down here, but... Man, I feel like it'd be super sweet to get all that excess uh, washing laundry. This is like the, the ultimate laundry setup for me right now. This is this is the problem that I deal with. Like I'm about to have kid number five, man. So it's just like my, our life kind of goes around the grocery bill and and the and the home laundromat. So that's one of the big things on the design for this house is can I can I make my wife's laundry situation easier? I'm all up under the crawl space now. Actually fixing to do a little bit of work up under here. Um, I gotta actually run two supplies to it, I think, because it's got half inch going to it now, but it's got two faucets. I'll show you the sink, I'll show you the sink. And um, I'm just, just trying to just plan for everything. They call me Johnny Overkill. They call me Johnny Shortcut. They call me two yes they do yes they do this is my 300 dollars surplus building supply i have no idea how i got the sink other than maybe god just gave it to me Which all good things come from god so i guess he did they asked me son where'd you get all the solar hot water how'd you get that 80 gallon tank so much hotter I got a dual heat exchanger and she's running. All right, so obviously I'm gonna have to clean this thing up. This area that I'm standing in may well be the reason I got the house. But um, I think what I'm gonna do, there's where my cold's coming in. I think I'm gonna like mount those strut brackets and go straight up and hit the top of the ceiling and kind of build myself a little fake wall, a little unistrut wall. And then that's where all my like plumbing and stuff will strap to. Because this, this one little tube talon, it's not going to cut it for me. It's just not going to, it's been coupled twice now. That's just not enough for me. So that's probably what I'm going to do. That's the main supply to the house. So I'll just like cut it right there, cut it right there, feed the water heater and strap to this wall and get everything real strong and uh, I'm mainly wanting to see if Big Jake Andrade comes in here and starts chatting it up on this water heater he don't know nothing about heating hot water they said son where'd you get all your solar hot water how'd you get that 80 gallon tank so much hotter so I'm doing both a buffer tank 
and I'm doing a heat pump water heater and the 120 gallon buffer tank it's probably a little big but you know call it a buffer tank it's mainly a tank that water comes in off the well so I want redundancy I want multiple ways to heat the water also want multiple water heaters and I want it's got to be efficient there's a lot of things I've thought about with this water heating system you know I've been thinking about this I've been hoarding parts for this for like 10 years this is my ultimate dream and I'm just afraid to do it but I not so afraid that I didn't already run the wire for it, but it's put the hot water, it's not hot, put the hot water heater in this laundry area. That'll be my washing, or that'll be my dryer, electric dryer, which they give off a good bit of heat. It's my washing machine, both of them have motors. They both give off a good bit of heat. Probably gonna put a freezer in here too. And then this is our big family closet. The solution is, is that while my kids are little, all of the laundry, all their clothes are going to go in this giant closet and if their clothes aren't in here then they're not getting washed and if they don't know where the clothes are it's because they're in here i'm gonna to try to solve my wife's problems that's the big question of this video guys is do i go for it and install my heat pump water heater in a finished space so it can suck the heat and blow cool air into this area that would also help me with my mini splits or do i do I, do I head back down into the crawl space and have both my water heaters down there? So, big question for me guys. That's what I'm chewing on right now. All right, so there's the next big question is, do I run another supply? This is half inch pipe. And then the last question I got for you guys, yeah, you didn't think I'd be, thought I'd be telling you stuff, not asking you stuff since I'm a tuber, but I've got this awesome farmhouse sink that I got at a builder surplus for like 300 bucks, couldn't believe it. Do I run a second set of supplies since there's two groups of two faucets here? Do I run more half inch or can the flow a half inch? Is that enough for two faucets? This is the faucet we're putting in. The 1.8 gallon per minute, 60 PSI. It's the wall mount kitchen faucet with sprayer assembly. And I got one just like it for the other one. I guess that's only like three gallons, four gallons a minute, so. Maybe I should just answer my own question by looking at flow charts. I don't do them much anymore because it was more of a call and response back from the old solar hot water days. But it'd be like, Ooh. Well, tell me, son, where'd you get all the solar hot water? How'd you get that 80 gallon tank so much hotter? Except this is 120. This would be 120, but it'll be same kind of thing. 